Hello and welcome to this video about setting up O-Drive to work with Flypy T-Mover to work with a racing simulator. So the first thing we're going to do is install VMware. I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it again. This is a software that allows you to make virtual machines. The second thing you need to do is download Ubuntu. I've already downloaded the latest version, so that you can do here. Now in VMware, we're going to create a new virtual machine. Here we can select the file that we just downloaded from the Ubuntu website. Click Next, set a name, username, password, and again, click Next. Next, you can change the settings but i will just keep it as it is next so now it will start installing ubuntu and when this is done i will be back okay so now it is installed we can enter the password this we're going to skip. We're going to open the software app because we need to do some updates. Here we're going to click on updates, update all, password. Okay, so now these updates are done. We can close this. It asks us to install the latest version. I will do this now. and wait for this and now we'll be back. Now that the software update is installed, we're going to install some things in the terminal. To open the terminal, you hit Control alt t This file is going to be available in the description below. So we're going to take the first one. As you can see here, if there are any yes no questions during the installation always enter yes so this is the first one enter your password yes this can sometimes take a while but just do it for all these i will be back when this is done Okay, now that these are all installed, we can close this and open the software app again. Go to search, search for Visual Studio Code. And this is what we need. So we will install it, enter the password. While this is installing, we can already go to the O-Drive website and download the firmware. Here we can download the zip file. Click OK. Now we can extract this to the desktop, extract, close, close, close. So now here we have the file. This is still installing. Okay, it is installed. We can open VS Code here, all, Visual Studio Code. Skip these steps. Open a folder, select the firmware folder, OK. Trust the authors, 
Now we need to edit the communication file, the ASCII protocol, because it used to be so that the amount that was put in with the command was the amount of steps from the encoder, but they have changed it. Now it's the amount of turns that the motor does, but we need the steps. So we're going to go to line 145. This may change in a later version, but you just need to look for this piece of code where it says P for position. And we're going to divide this by the encoder CPR. So access dot encoder underscore dot config underscore dot CPR. You can save this, control S. Close that file. Now we're going to open tub.config.default, remove the hashtag before this, change the board version to the one you have. For me, it's 3.5 and 48 volts. Save that. And also close that. Now these you can ignore. Now we need to rename this file. Remove the default. Now we can open a terminal, new terminal, and type make all. This will create the file. Now you can connect the ST link. As shown in the picture here. I need to click connect to virtual machine. Okay. Make flash. Now the O drive has the new firmware on it and we can install the O drive tool. So we do control alt T again to open a terminal and we're going to follow the steps in my file. So first we're going to update some things if there are any to update. Paste. Yes. After this, we're going to do a reboot. Python should already be installed, but we're going to do it just to be sure. To get it back to full screen, you can do this. Control Alt T. Yes, so it will update. Now we're going to install pip. This. We're going to pip install O drive. also going to do an update to be sure that we have the latest version.
and reboot again. Now you need to connect your O drive with the USB cable. Keep in mind that the USB cable does not provide power to the O drive, so you also need to connect your power supply. Again, to get this full screen, you need to do that. Control Alt T. I'm going to power up my O drive. Connect to virtual machine. Okay. O drive tool. Connect it to O drive. This is the serial number as O drive zero. Now in the file, you can find the commands. This points to the name of your O drive. So in this situation, it's O drive zero. And this is the access you want to change the setting. Of. So, for example, I'll take this one, paste, and I'll do access zero. It can also be access one. CPR is equal to thousand six hundred for me. Just like that. And for access one. It's the same. And then you need to do all these settings for your setup. So the calibration current needs to be pretty high in my case because I have linear actuators. For rotational, it's not needed that much. Current limit is the maximum of your motor. The pole pairs is the amount of magnets divided by two. The velocity limit you can set. The brake resistor, you need to set it true because if you don't, it's going to dump the power into the power supply and it can break or it just errors out because it doesn't work. And once you have done these settings, you can save the configuration and reboot. I think by now it does reboot right after save configuration by its own. And you can do access state, requested state is a full calibration sequence. This will do every calibration step there is. And if this works, you can enable the startup configurations. So startup motor calibration, for example, you can set these to true and save the configuration again and also reboot again. And for the end stops and homing, you can assign a GPIO pin. You need to enable them. You need to look at this link here, what setup you have for your and stops. I need to use digital pull-up resistors. Mine is not active high. You can set an offset. This is for me 48 because that's the middle of my actuators. But you can also set it that the zero position is at the bottom in FlyPT Mover. And other commands you can also find by after a dot hitting tab and then you get the drop down menu of all the options there are you can set your homing speed and then at the end you can set the startup homing as true so a few tips make sure the encoder is connected correctly to the motor because if it's not it will cause a lot of errors and frustration if you want to find new comments i just told you that that you can use the tab button to get the drop down menu and if you get an error and you want to know what it is, you can do dump errors from that device, for example. Here it is. For example, and it will show no errors because there are none. Once those settings are done, you can close the virtual machine and we can start the setup FlyPT Mover. So here you can download the latest version. I've already done this. We can open it and we get something like this. And these won't be here, but now I've already set them up. So here you can right click, add. You can add the source, that's a game. 
for example, LFS. Looks like this. You can click connect, but the game needs to be open to connect, of course. Hide. Here we have a rig, so add rig. You can add what you have. Here you need to enter the dimensions and you can see those here. You can hide this as well. And you can also add a pose, a direct. Now we add an output and we choose serial. So I have three here because I have three O drives, each controlling two motors. And to set up an O drive, in this, you need to add these commands. So in the file that we edited, the ASCII protocol file, you saw the P, that stands for position, and you one space zero for the axis you want to control, another space, and then axis 1A. This is from FlyPT. And this is the amount of pulses it will move then 13 in these brackets. That's the close command for the ASCII protocol. And then without the space, P1 for axis 1, axis 2A, and 13 again. And you can select the port here. I know, yeah, it shows up, port 5. And now I can send a command to the O drive. Here you can send a start chain, for example, if you want it to move to the bottom, you can move it to position minus 5000, for example. And at the stop string, you can do it as well. So when you disconnect, it sends that string. Here you can set the amount of data that it sends. You can set the serial speed. You need to leave this on 115,200. Data bits is 8. Stop bits is 1. And you can click connect to test the connection. And you can close this again. And for these other two, you have to choose two other axes. And for the last one, you have to choose the last two. Close this. And here you can also add a 3D viewer so you can see how your simulator should move. You can save the setup, for example, on your desktop. Save. That was it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments below. Please consider subscribing and ring the notification bell. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.